Agent Romanov. You miss me? Oh yeah, Charles. We got ourselves an X-Men fan. Captain. Your Highness. Captain. Big fan. Spider-Man. Hey everyone. Hey, I got here. I broke it. Phil. <laughs> Being able to do this new version of Thor, it's hugely liberating and, 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 and fun. We had a um, big sort of fat suit, which I think was sort of 60 or 70 pounds. This little move. Yeah, yeah, that's the shimmy. Peggy has a career, and she has a lot of self-respect, and she's pretty sick and tired of lots of men kind of not taking her seriously in the army and, and you know, playing around with her. When we really distilled the core qualities that we wanted out of Captain America, I think there's a moral fiber to him that really isn't something that you act, that it's something you need to possess. Some people move on, but not us. Not us. That's incredibly emotional. And we're bringing to close a six and a half year journey for us and a 10 to 11 year journey for some of the actors. All clear, which way? Oh, you say something? I said I want to claw my eyes out. But unfortunately, it wouldn't do any good because I already saw the awfulness. I don't know how you're going to get us through all that. Don't worry. She's got help. It was really beautiful to feel this sort of Marvel sisterhood, you know, and we're all coming from so many different films that we all came together. We all made a bond that I think is really exceptional and rare, and uh, we got to do really great stuff that the fans really loved. You know, you, you know that's kind of coming to an end, so it was always a little bittersweet, and it was always on everybody's mind, like, you know, I'd be in a scene with Robert, and I'd look over at him, and we'd just be like, we did this, you know, and that was really moving. Robert has a whole career of great work behind him, and he was at a point in his life and his career where he was ready to break out and do something really big and exciting. John was in love with the idea of Downey playing the part, and we all felt so sure about him on a creative level. Because he wasn't instantly a slam dunk approval, I suggested we have screen tests. Orange soda. We are getting the whole team, aren't we? A duck! Good it was the hottest I've ever been. <laughs> How does that feel? Oh, I mean, amazing. Looks like it's in the right time. <laughs> <laughs> and we had, obviously, the beard, the hair, and I had these things that go in the mouth to kind of plump out my cheeks a bit, which sort of had a little effect on the voice as well, but probably in a good way, it was, it was a different thought. I think Peggy relates to someone really fighting for what they believe in and really having to struggle all the time to prove themselves, and she being the only woman in this environment knows exactly what that feels like. It's not just it, the normal everyday love story. There's something else. In the same. And Chris Evans was someone who seemed to inhabit all of those qualities the most. So everyone was in love with the idea of Chris, except Chris. The actors, these characters have come to define major parts of their careers, and they're ubiquitous with these characters on a global level. This has been in my mind, I think, more than anything, it's just that journey from uh, self-centeredness to making space for others to... Will you focus? I'm focused. This pretty place is about to get uglified real quick by a bunch of freaking elves. Do you know when I saw all these people die? So this, this is a little bit difficult for yeah, me. Okay, it's so kind of like, I see what you do. I know your powers. Okay, show me what you got. And then we just clicked. And we were just like cheering each other on. Everyone just kind of taking their turns, moving around, trying to help each other out. It was so fun. Tired. It certainly was, you know, a lot of nostalgia, a slight sort of melancholy. These people have become family, and we've shared some years of our life together now. Are you anxious? I remember walking in with Robert Downey Jr. the day of the tests, 
He was laughing and in great spirits and completely at ease. And he got in front of the camera and started saying the lines. I assure you the day weapons are no longer needed to keep the peace. I'll happily transist to manufacturing bricks and beams for baby hospitals, making hemp pants and the like. But until that time, can I get you a drink? Nobody pull a hamstring. Yeah, my Warm your butt cheeks up. Warm up your butt cheeks. Cut there. Copy that. Cool. Hi, my name's Thor. I'm 22 years old. They've won Asgard and a lot of sugar. We're shooting a superhero film, and here's one of the most recognizable superheroes, but he's just turned into a new character. In the same way that we love Steve, because he exhibits some sort of determination and selflessness, it's the same thing that attracts her to him. Steve learned a lot from Peggy Carter. If you go back and look at the first Avenger, that is the essential relationship that I think turned him into who he is today, it turned him into Captain America. The only reason there was hesitation to begin with was because of the, the commitment. It's a big movie, and you know those, those are the movies that if, if they succeed, there's a change, a lifestyle change. And to it means making space for a relationship with Pepper, to having comet tragic things happen, like with he and Cap. Thank you, Tony. Will you keep that a little quiet? Didn't bring one for the whole team. OK, so why don't you reach down deep inside and try and find a small ounce of humanity? Just give me the thingy. Just give me the thingy. Just give me the thingy. I didn't even, didn't even want to come here. You're living all these repressed memories. I can't get it together. Just good. You're embarrassing. You share exactly. this connection. So there's a connection without ever having met. It's, it's a really cool thing about the whole battle. That day was insane. <laughs> We were all in it together, and it felt electric. It was really, really cool. You anticipate it being an emotional experience, but then when they actually say, you know, Chris, you're wrapped, and, and, it's, and it's done, it's like that graduation day. You know it's coming, but then when it hits, you can't prepare for it. It, it, was, it was more emotional than I expected. I don't want to call it an out-of-body experience, but it was one of those rushes that I'm sure, like, somebody would feel if they're about to play a big sporting arena, playing for the ring or something like that. It was just like, am I going to pass out, or am I going to nail this? On that day that Robert screen tested, it was clear that there was no one else who can play that part. Yeah, does it look cool or? It doesn't feel cool, but if it looks cool, <laughs> that's what matters. Do you have any idea what's coursing through my veins right now? Sunions? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What Chris does with that character and how it just kind of has this shift, his excitement was really palpable. <laughs> her sense of integrity, her call to action, are all qualities that have been ingrained in Steve and are, are his best qualities. And they come from an uh, example from Peggy. And so I think it was critical that, that her character embody those essential qualities because he wouldn't be who he is without them. And if, it's, if, if it fails, it's a whole other can of worms. Even Chris's reluctance to be a star <laughs> spoke to how right he was for the role, because Captain America was not looking for the limelight. And then healing, because we had to come together to fight for the greater good. There's something really profound about it. You trust me? I do. All right, which way? You don't know? You used to frickin' live here! For 1,500 years, not forever. That way, I think. Yeah, maybe. We are dead. We are so, so dead. You know, I normally don't watch playback on the monitor, but I wanted to see that reveal of all the women of Marvel, and I thought it was really powerful. This is the fight of our lives. And we're gonna win. Whatever it takes. He's pretty good, that. Right? It was magic. It was exactly the feeling as a casting director with Kevin, with John, with everyone, that, that we all wanted to have that feeling like we have it. This is it. This is our. <laughs> no, no, Brad, you had it. All right, here we go. The thing about time travel. <laughs> I can't believe I made a whole movie with this thing on. <laughs> he had been playing the character for a while and really wanted to find something new. He has such dexterity as a talent. He's incredibly funny. He has just really lovely energy. Is he asleep? No, no. I'm pretty sure he's dead. <laughs> I'm 
gonna need a rain check on that dance. A week next Saturday at the Stork Club. You got it. Eight o'clock on the dock. Don't you dare be late. He was humble. He was modest. He needed to feel that in his bones. I love the character. He's everything that I wish I could be as a man, you know? And the creative forces behind the film are fantastic, between Joe and Kevin Feige. And, you know, Marvel in general, they, they, they know what they're doing. What I put upon my character, those very principles of the family and uh, the value. You're talking about a superhero with zero superpowers. But this is a guy you don't want to mess with because the values of, of him are, are unflappable. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Powerful and really exhilarating. And I was thinking of all of the young girls in the audience who will probably feel really inspired by that in one way or another. So it was a really nice thing to be a part of. <laughs> See what I have to deal with here? 10 years of this. So in the end, I was so excited. Once he committed, he committed a thousand percent. You know, he stands there, tells the truth, and then kicks ass. He's just an everyman. He has a high skill set. Hi, everybody. Hi. How you doing? Hi. 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 Hi